Antes de empezar me gustaría agradecer al equipo de Excel por las facilidades que me han dado para la entrevista y a Jumbach por su tiempo. Dicho esto, comenzamos. I have to start asking about you leaving Fnatic. What were wrong? Uh, I didn't find a lot of fulfillment in the position. Um, contrary to 2018, where the players were very open and uh, eager to learn. Um, and there were there were goals set at every practice. Everyone was trying their best, doing their best. It was a good atmosphere. There was a lot of fun outside of the games as well. In our free time, we spent a lot of time together. Um, contrary to 2019, uh, I would say a small a small group didn't really care much about the, pra the team practice and didn't put any effort into it. So they didn't really talk during the practice or gave feedback to teammates or wanted to receive feedback. And because of that, my job didn't feel very fulfilling. Hmm. And and then um, I have to ask myself, right, uh, am I going to be happier in another team? Um, yes. And then the other question is, am I going to uh, perform as well as with Fnatic because they have very talented individuals and the answer is probably not. And then I have to put it in a scale weighted against each other. And I would say that after four years of being uh, quite successful, um, I think my happiness and my desire to uh, feel fulfillment within the job is like the best feeling I can get. So I wanted to work with players that are younger, hungrier, um, have, has a better team atmosphere. And that's where Excel came in. Them being a new organization means that there is a lot of room for improvement, but they'll also be super open to it. There's room for more autonomy with the roster. Uh, the players will be hungrier because they've not been at a, like a, at a big international stage before and they're still really hungry for that. So I, I imagine the players will be way more open to feedback. The practice will be better. Um, so yeah, that's why I left and that's why I'm here with Excel right now. Hmm. Uh, break decisions, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, it's difficult, and I have to say, like, I was, I was strongly reconsidering, as well, just staying with Fnatic, and it was on my mind because going from the second best team in the West to, you know, to the tenth place in EU, hmm. that's that's a difficult jump to make. Um, having said that, I did my due diligence on Excel. Um, I know a lot of uh, former staff members. I know expects very well. So I made sure to check with them, like, hey, how is everything going in the team? What do you think? Um, how was it in Excel? How is everything run? And it came back overwhelmingly positive. So that really eased it. And now it's more the challenge of getting the 10th place team into playoffs or even beyond. Okay. And you personally, as the Fnatic coach, uh, are you happy with this year in general? Um, I was very unhappy just uh, on a personal uh, note but if you look at the performance i say um after week three or four in spring we thought we wouldn't even make playoffs in spring so if you had asked me after four weeks in spring that we would make quarterfinals and only lose to the world champions i would say yeah i'll, I'll really take that i'll be really happy with that um if you had asked me in december last year that we were going to be in quarterfinals and get eliminated i would not be happy so It's really a matter of when you ask the question. And I think if you ask the question for most of the last of this year, I would say, yeah, quarterfinals is actually, wow. Oh, are we really going to make it that far? So all in all, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with where we made it. My next question is, um, you know, we heard uh, that you got offers from NA. We heard rumors about TSM uh, and also in other European teams. Uh, but my question is, why did you choose the Excel project? Well, first of all, rumors are rumors, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and no. certainly not always true. Um, so there's there's a few things. So I I weigh the regions, and EU is a preference. I was open to offers from uh, from America, and I also talked to a team in the LPL that was really interested, and their sound was very interesting as well. But I did have a preference for Europe because I think the region is better and I'm also turning 28 so I want to build a family life uh, at some point in the future um, so with that said um, I was open to other regions but had a preference for Europe and then I just talked to Excel and know what they stood for what their lineup was going to kind of look like what they were working on uh, changes they made um, behind the scenes and on, you know, working on the roster and yeah the offer was solid as well so All in all, it was just a really good package for me to say, okay, well, this is a good challenge. Um, the offer is good. It's in Europe. Uh, I'm going to work again with Expect, who I've worked with before and had a 
tremendous time with. So let's go for it. And uh, yeah, let's make uh, Excel a powerhouse. Hmm. Uh, Excel didn't perform very well this first year of LEC. So my question is what we can expect from this team on the upcoming season? Our goal going into this season is to make playoffs. And uh, what we want to achieve in 2021 is to make Worlds. And I think it's relatively realistic to, for us to make playoffs. Um, we're still working and building on the roster, but I think if the pieces fall together, um, I can see us hit that goal and uh, maybe surprise a few teams here and there by maybe playing for a live event even. And that's my real ambition is to make a live event this year. Um, but yeah, I'll find enough fulfillment just improving the guys, you know, helping the team out. Uh, I think they were a really good team last year in terms of early game. I saw some very synergistic pieces, but they always faltered in the mid to late game. And that's where I think I can really help them and uh, get a few wins for them. Hmm. Um, you told me that you are excited for working again with Expect. So uh, I we can basically confirm that Expect is staying on, on Excel. Yes. Uh, also, uh, yesterday I saw uh, Kedrel uh, tweeting, like, you know, giving the sensation of uh, he's staying too. Uh, this information is true, uh, you can say nothing. You know what, I'm not even sure what I'm allowed to say, so maybe I already overstepped a little bit with expect. So uh, let's move on to a different topic before I know what I can and cannot say. Okay, okay, no problem. Um... <laughs> I want to ask you a little, like, particular question. Uh, in okay. our show, uh, we have, like, a recurrent debate about the importance of the coach and the staff inside the team. Uh, what are your thoughts about this topic? Um, I think it's it's really up to the coach and the coaching staff in general how much value they add. Um, Personally, I set out a goal after 2017, my last year with G2, that I wanted to become more valuable than one single player. Um, and I'd like to think that I'm, I actually achieved that goal. Um, but of course, there are coaches that aren't as useful or um, might not hit that mark. And there's, there's probably a dozen that, that do actually hit that. Um, but generally speaking, I think a good coach will add a lot. Um if he's also aligned with the team. Like, you need the right coach for the right team. Like, Graps is a better coach for this G2 lineup than I would be, for example. Hmm. And I would probably be a better coach for, let's say, last year's Fnatic than Graps would be, right? So I think if you find a good synergy, then I think a, co a, co a coach and the coaching staff in general is extremely valuable. Um, and related to this last question, um, I sometimes see people discussing about the current state of the coaching staffs on LEC and its difference between uh, LEC and LPL. You know, they said that uh, LPL coaching staff is like much better than the LEC ones. What do you think is the state of the coaching staff on EU? I can't really look behind the doors of other teams in either EU or LPL, so that's really difficult for me to give my opinion on. I think generally speaking, the infrastructure in Europe has been improving. You see every team now has an assistant coach, they have an analyst. So there's workload being shared among the staff, which I think is a great thing. Now, I can't say much to the coaching ability to someone like Duke or Yamato Cannon because I have not seen them coach. I don't, hmm. I, so I don't know what I do behind the scene. Um, and this is the same for the LPL team. So I cannot really say, yeah, well, it's true, it's not true. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Um, well, There's also a lot of rumors about the inclusion of like emerging talents from the regional le leagues on the LEC and especially on clubs that uh, did this like this first year, like uh, Excel or Rogue. So I want to ask you uh, your opinion uh, of our Spanish league, the SLO. And if you took a, lo a look to some of the players of this league. Oh, that's a rough question. Um, I haven't followed the uh, SLO very much because uh, Fnatic was in the UK region and I was mostly following our academy team. But uh, I know that the Giants did very well in uh, the last EU Masters. And yeah, if you're looking for rookie players, either for your academy or uh, as a starter in, uh, 
I would say if you're an LEC team looking to have a starter in the L, in a, like in the bottom five team, you're definitely going to look at the Spanish league. You're going to look at just the top performance in uh, EU Masters in general. Uh, so, yes, um, I too have uh, looked to scout uh, in the Spanish league and in Giants specifically. Hmm. Uh... Um, so who knows? <laughs> Uh, so in the announcement that you will become the coach for Excel, you said a few words, and I remember you said that you wanted to use your experience for raising, uh, you know, rookie players or players without much experience on the LEC to the top. So can we expect uh, in the Excel roster a similar strategy to the last year with um, people who don't have that much? experience of LEC? I think you will not see a lot of players that have uh, a lot of international experience, so MSI Worlds, um, but will have domestic experience either in the LEC or within the EO Masters, yes. Okay. Uh, also, in uh, continuing talking about Europe, uh, this past year we had like the the LEC rebrand. So I I want to know your thoughts about this rebrand and your expectations from the league in general for this new upcoming season. Well, I think that the rebrand was a great success. And I think for the most part, a lot of the casters and analysts did a fantastic job throughout the entire year. And as a, I don't know if this is correct English, a cherry on the pie, uh, we also had really good international results, and especially G2 winning MSI probably uh, turned a lot of uh, attention towards the LEC and other regions also uh, wanting to look at Europe because, hey, Europe is now considered actually a top tier region, um, proving that the Fnatic Worlds run and the G2 Worlds run last year was not a one off. And of course, again, at Worlds, we had a really good performance. So I think the brand will just keep, continue to grow and grow further because the region itself is establishing itself as one of the best ones in the world. Hmm. Um, which means that, that you know, uh, fans that want to watch good competition, they will watch Europe. It's very interesting to watch a team like uh, G2 battle it out every week and the, the play style that they have. And we have a few of those teams that have very unique play styles and are also capable of uh, performing on, on the highest level at, at the world. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of uh, positives for the LEC. And what I expect next year is something similar. I think right now EU has established its uh, dominance. Um, in the West, um, so it's it's really outpaced and outgrown NA, and now it's just a matter of uh, fighting China and Korea at all the international events, and that will definitely turn in a lot of attention towards Europe. Um, I think they will hold most of the same casters and analysts uh, on the show, which have been doing a fantastic job, so I think it's looking really good for uh, anyone in the LEC right now. Hmm. Uh, we had a good running worlds, like you said, but uh, a week ago, we saw G2 getting destroyed by FanPlus Phoenix on World Finals. So this is the second year on a row that Euro gets smashed by a LPL team. Um, I don't know if you can say much about this. I think so, because you were involved in the last world with Fnatic on the final. So. Uh, what are the things that the European teams need to change to finally achieve the Summoner's Cup? I don't think they have to change a lot. Um, such a 3-0 victory in the final can just happen either based off of a bad matchup. Um, and the Worlds has a lot to do with like having to meet teams that have a really good matchup. I can only speak for ourselves, but let's say in 2018... Um, we were lucky to not be on the same side of the bracket as RNG because um, they were a team that were playing our style but better than us at that time. And if we hadn't figured out the solo lane meta at that point, we probably would have been eliminated. Um, and G2 did find out the, the solo lane meta, but then they couldn't beat the solo lane meta of IG. So Worlds in general has a lot to do with matchups um, and also has a lot to do with fatigue, burnout. Um, in 2018, we definitely burned out after the semifinals. Um, in 2019, I don't think G2 burned out really. Um, so it could have had to, it probably had a lot to do with the matchups and maybe going a little bit away from their own style in the finals because that's something that a lot of teams have when they're not very confident is that they try to find something new that hasn't been done before. 
um, or hasn't been worked hasn't worked in the tournament yet. So, for example, you look at uh, Mickey X suddenly playing Tom Kench, You see that uh, that uh, Caps is playing Pike. You know, this is not something that you would expect from them going into the finals after what you've seen from them the entire tournament. Um, so I think staying true to who you are and then making small adapt- adaptations based on where your opponent is is usually much more efficient than actually just changing your style completely. So do you think this international problem that you have for achieving a perfect run on the Worlds tournament uh, it's because of LPL and their unique play style or is the Asian teams in general? I think it's definitely a Chinese style. This is something that uh, a lot of the Chinese teams showed in the 2018 World Scrims. It didn't translate very well on the stage. I think a lot of the teams were more passive, but um, back then, every scrim, there was a level two bot lane dive. And then uh, when the guys would come back, like when the the, the, the team that dove got dove, Kain came back to lane, they had to build a wave and then dive the other guy. And it was a really fun meta to watch. And it seems that only Farm Plus really stayed true to that identity and never let it go. Um, and they just built their entire strategy around it. I think they had a really good identity, uh, one that is, uh, it revolves around playing League of Legends correctly and quickly, so as fast as possible, and always having mid lane priority and playing off of that. And I think we'll see a lot more, a lot more teams trying to force that in the future, where if you have mid wave priority in the early game for let's say four or five waves, then you need to be good enough as a team to make something happen out of it. Um, and Fun Plus does that, right? So they can play not to listen to a scaling pick because they are confident and they know that they can actually end the game if they get a small lead or actually translate their early mid-wave prio into side lane dives. Hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, the last question is not really a question. Is if you want to say something to like the Spanish fans on this uh, new run on Nexel, um, well, I usually say something in Spanish, but uh, to one of your colleagues. But I've already used the only Spanish I know, yeah. which is "hasta la vista, baby" and "plata <laughs> o plomo." Um, uh, oh, I'm just gonna give a big thanks because I actually really like the Spanish crowd. Uh, Madrid was really next level. It's just the loudest uh, stadium I've ever heard, and that was after coming out of Berlin, which was the loudest I've ever heard until then. So it says a lot. Hmm. Um, Spanish fans are just extremely passionate and we're also really big fanatic fans. So I just want to thank them for all the cheering they've done in Madrid, but also all the support they've given fanatic and myself uh, throughout the last two years. And now I hope they also follow, uh, follow me to Excel. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thanks for your time, Joey. And good, oh, thank you too. good luck on Excel this year. Thank you very much, man. And uh, have a good evening. Same. Bye-bye.